We are a full service provider of both digital and paper-based communication. And I think that's one of the things that we need to, to change much more going forward is our image. We've actually been digital for more than 20 years. We drive the largest customer loyalty group in, uh, in the Nordic region with Capel, more than 5 million members. Mm. So we are so much more than just being a fulfillment house that mm. produces envelopes. Mm. And this is the message that we need to get out to the market very fast. to do something that is you know changing our game and I think that's my main focus going forward for the next couple of years to change the way our image are so we are much more proactive in the way we deal with customers mm. and that we find the potential that are with the customers. We have our own development team sitting in Yudebo which mm -hmm. have been there for you know 25 30 years mm. their skills has also needs to be changed going yeah. forward the yeah. way that we sell the products that we have and also to be much more analytical in the way that we interact with customers using data proactively. Mm. So we will change as an organization going forward, mm. absolutely. I actually see that we have been in the loyalty market for lots of years. Uh, I still see a big, big potential. Uh, we have developed a new loyalty program for the smaller business, the SMB market. So we can actually be in place both for the small companies and for the larger companies. We uh, are running some of the biggest and most interesting loyalty programs in the Nordic region. Uh, they are based on our platforms and uh, we are very proud of that uh, cooperation. A set of initiatives and a uh, technical platform that allows these big retailers uh, to uh, communicate with their customers in a more relevant and meaningful way. We enable the customers, so for example Nordic Choice Hotels, to uh, collect data basically from offline, what happens in the hotel, and also online if somebody books a room online, and some other sources of data obviously and collect them and have them in a uh, safe place to be used for all sorts of purposes, but uh, mainly for communication. The short question to that answer is that you can take information if you ask them first. So if you ask a consumer, uh, can I collect this data and I'm going to use it for this and this purpose, then you can collect the data. But there are also limits, and those limits will also change uh, next year with, with new law. Yes, it does. Because I think you know yourself, you get a lot of emails, and a lot of them you just you don't even read it. I think that when you succeed in making content and context right, then you make me interested. So we know that for a fact it helps when you uh, target your customers and when you make the right communication for the right uh, audience. Yes, absolutely. Uh, the marketing departments are looking into this. Uh, they are doing rapid changes in how they collect data, how they communicate. And, and it might not be that they are calling it a loyalty club, but still they are working with these questions uh, heavily. Conversion rate is one, and there are some uh, very popular uh, ways to measure loyalty and, and uh, lifetime value is one of them. But there are also ways to measure their preference if they like you and recommend you to others, is which that... is uh, becoming more and more popular. Exactly, especially when you talk about loyalty programs, there's a lead time between three to 12 months before you actually sell a solution. But there's a lot to do with the customer in the meantime. And showing value makes the, the decision to have a loyalty program much, much faster. So we need to be there for the customers wherever they are in the life cycles. Well, like a lot of other companies, we try to do a lot of inbound marketing. Customers are acting a, a bit different now than they did some years ago. So now up to 60% of the progress is already m made before the customer contacts the company. Uh, so we try to make white papers and blogs and do uh, a lot of stuff so when 
the customer are researching the market, then we just pop up with uh, our interesting stuff. So um, that's one of the things we try to do. We try to uh, to go to the limit from for what you can do with the, your direct mails, of course, and uh, and use the experience we have in this house uh, to make some interesting direct mails, of course. Absolutely. I mean, uh, some of our first customers for, for uh, those uh, or Swedish origins, for example, is from the 60s, uh, where we sent envelopes with things to Volkswagen owners. We still do this type of communication in those cases where that suits the customer best. We are totally channel independent, so we use all those channels that you usually hear of, the SMS, email, paper-based uh, apps. So we, we bring that with us as a historic uh, heritage which is uh, both fun and interesting when you meet new clients that are only looking into the digital area. I think you need to split the groups that you're communicating for, because for young people 20 to 30 years, they want everything digital. And, but if you look at plus 50, they're much more likely to have it paper-based. So you need to know much more about your customers to hit them in the right channels so they get the right message. Mm. And since we have all the data about the customers for you know, 20 years, we should be the one giving good advertising or advice to our customers. Mm. And that's how we will increase our market share going forward. Right now, if you look at our revenue, uh, about 15 to 20% is digital. Going forward, that, that should increase a lot, so it's 35-40% going a couple of years forward. But we'll still main, maintain the base of, of the quality products we do that are paper-based. Mm. So we'll go more digital, but we'll not forget our past and our history. Yeah. We want to grow, yeah. and we want to grow both digitally, but also paper-based, mm. because I think we don't have our fair share of the market. Mm.